Hey, how's it going? Hello, how are you tonight? I'm doing all right. Are you ready for a little field trip to Great Britain tonight? Britain, eh? Oh, yes. Hi. Right. 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 Too right. Well, tonight, indeed, we are going to continue our stories about the Gallic Wars and Caesar's adventures. Now, last week, we saw that you had taken us on a, on a little side journey down to Aquitania. And tonight, what we're going to see is we're going to focus on uh, the year 55 BC. And this is the first of two invasions of Britain that Caesar would do. And historically... Two? Yes, well, this, this, is, the, this is sort of the... Uh, tipping his toe into the English Channel just to kind of see what what's on the other side. This will be the more modest of the two invasions, but this first invasion of Britain is the scenario that we will be working with tonight. Now, historically, we have been looking at Gaul as a whole, and we throw that term around. Remember that uh, if we're looking at a map, and I'm, I've probably got a map magically appearing right now, uh, the Gallic tribes are sort of, we saw the Aquitani down in the in the southern part. We've got the majority of France is the, the Celtica tribes. And then modern-day Belgium is sort of the Belgi, Belgi tribes. And uh, they also have some other ones that are mixed in there. And now these are many, many subgroups, but those are the larger factions uh, territorial wise. We also are going to be talking a little bit about the Veneti or the Veneti, uh, who are sort of the seafaring Gauls uh, of most of the English Channel and sort of the the uh, western coast of France there. But uh, historically we know from accounts through archaeological discoveries that the Belgic tribes uh, at some point crossed over the English Channel themselves and they founded colonies and tribes and probably had second cousins once removed in what is modern day Great Britain. So th there's no dispute on that. And and remember that most of what we're going to be talking about tonight is Caesar's accounts of his uh, of his belli, his wars of the Gauls. Um, oh, completely very, very unbiased. <laughs> very unbiased, exactly. Uh, so during his uh, attempt to pacify all of these various, we, we've seen him travel the, the width and breadth of Gaul. And during his attempt to pacify the Belgic tribes, uh, after he manages to succeed and he kind of gets a foothold up there, he feels that some of the Britons on the other side of the English Channel, who are the, those cousins that we talked about, were aiding and abetting uh, either directly by sending warriors or allowing the the Belgi to to flee and get away from the approaching Romans. So he's accusing them of that, and he also feels that perhaps the seafaring Veneti were allowing ships to be used and were also assisting in the resistance of these tribes before they were pacified. So because of all these reasons, he decides he's going to send an expeditionary force. He's going to lead an expeditionary force over to Great Britain to see what's on the other side of the English Channel. The problem is, we are when he starts planning this, the first thing he does is he, he gets all the traders and merchants who are commonly going across the English Channel and uh, who, of course, have loyalties and connections. First, he asks them for information about these tribes over there, and they're all like, we don't know nothing, right? They don't know anything about these Britons on the other side. They're all just wild and crazy. So he gets resistance. Well, who are the Britons? <laughs> We're all all. We're all Britons. Uh, and he wants to be their king. So he gets this passive resistance from the merchants who are not going to get any, any information. But then he, he decides, well, maybe I'll send somebody over there to get a first-hand account. So he sends a tribune by the name of Gaius Volusinus, and he puts him in a boat, and he sends him across. Now we're talking about the for, sort of the narrowest part of the English Channel here between Belgium and uh, the literally the White Cliffs of Dover. So he sends him over there. Uh, he's gone for about two weeks, and when he returns, he tells Caesar that, look, I got over there, but there's just Britons everywhere, and I didn't get out of the boat because I was afraid to leave the boat, and I'm afraid they were going to kill me. So, having gotten that information, now Caesar decides it is time to post haste, build his army, load them into ships, and the problem is it is late in the campaigning season. Obviously, in Europe, you have a very finite amount of time during the summer when you can sort of optimally make these, these attempts like this, and the English Channel is usually pretty stormy on a good day. 
So uh, he now he's got a he's he's playing beat the clock as we've seen time and time again with some of these forces. So he loads two legions. He brings the seventh legion and his favorite, the tenth legion. He puts them on the uh, eighty ships, and he leaves instructions because he's waiting for his cavalry. He, he relies heavily on his cavalry, but they're not amassed yet. So he leaves instructions for once they get organized at the port to send them in following ships. And he takes the legions and goes across. And the first place they arrive is, in fact, Dover. Uh, historically, we seem to, to have confirmation that it is Dover. And, you know, and all along the, the white cliffs there at the top, the highlands overlooking the sea, we have the cinematic visage of, you know, Gauls and Britons uh, all within javelin throwing range. And they've got the high ground. Uh, so they are just covering the beach and just waiting for the first Roman to get off of those ships. And Caesar decides, hmm, prudence being what it is, uh, he will stay in the water with the boats and then we'll have a council of war and we'll wait as long as we can to see if the cavalry shows up. And the cavalry does not show up. So after, after a period of waiting, he decides that they will avoid any conflict with these uh, tribes on the beach and uh, he takes the the ships farther to the north anywhere from seven to ten miles where Volusinus had also been where it was reported that there were some places you could disembark easily and he gets up there and of course what do the Britons do they just watch the ships sailing along and they follow along with their own cavalry and their own battle chariots and they just shadow them all the way up and when the romans finally get to a point where caesar i guess in his impatience has decided we've got to just we've got to take it to him so he orders everyone off the ships the problem is these ships are very heavy they're deep draft ships and we don't know if they're triremes or biremes but they're they're significant and deep enough that they get stuck well well far off the beach in the surf uh, in the shallows. So these Roman soldiers who are wearing heavy plate, probably, uh, they have to jump over the sides and work their way into the shore. Now that's dangerous because again, they're all, they, they can be rained upon with missile fire from these Britons on the hills. And uh, that's more or less what happens. I mean, it's obviously very treacherous. And many of the forces did not want to get off the ships and there's a wonderful quote from the account from Caesar, where one of the standard bearers, Aquilifer, he is quoted as saying, trying to inspire the other forces, Leap, fellow soldiers, unless you wish to betray your eagle to the enemy. I, for my part, will perform my duty to the Republic and to my general. And he leaps over the side, and he inspires them all into the shore. And once they do get on shore, now we, we actually see what the map is showing us here. Once they get onto shore, it really isn't too much of a contest. Um, however, even though Caesar is able to uh, defeat these forces, or at least cause them to retreat, he doesn't get the complete victory that he wants because he doesn't have his cavalry. If he had his cavalry, which they, they never show up, uh, because he waits quite a while, they never were able to get organized and on their ships to follow behind. Uh, if he had his cavalry there, he could turn a retreat into a full-on route and drive these forces completely inland and chase them down. But as such, uh, he is unable to do so, and so he will be dissatisfied with this, quote, victory, because it is, it is not like the success that he is used to. He's, he's had great success in pacifying all these tribes on the mainland of Europe, but with the Britons here in this first attempt, it's really kind of half-hearted. So that's probably why we're going to see a much larger invasion in force uh, subsequent to this. So this is his first attempt tonight. Uh, that's what you and I are going to be playing through. So I will turn it over to you for the War Council. Well, by and large, it's going to be a pretty straightforward battle tonight. We've just got a lot of the expansion special rules in play tonight. We're playing to seven victory banners. The Britons have a leader with no one of name as, as their leader. They'll have five command cards. The Romans will be led by Caesar, and they'll have six command cards. 
the Britons uh, will get the advantage and they'll get to move first as the beleaguered Romans stagger ashore. We're going to treat all of these seacoast hexes there at the bottom row as fordable rivers. So they are not impassable. That's why all of our blocks are still in the water. If I recall correctly, a fordable river is a water hex that we can enter. When we're in said hex, we are limited to a max of two dice in close combat and one dice in range combat when battling out of said hex. So we'll need to get these troops out of the water as quickly as possible to make them effective. The Britons have the deadly Barbarian Chariot. So that is a new unit for this expansion and will use its new unit rules. We play with these earlier on in this expansion. So Barbarian Chariot can move up to three hexes and can battle with two or three battle dice. It scores a hit for each symbol and sword rolled. It gets to ignore one sword roll rolled against it. At full strength, it will enter close combat with one additional battle die. So it's basically a combination of chariot and warrior. It will lose an extra close combat die as soon as it takes its first bl block loss. But again, only after they are attacked again or they attack again. They also get the benefit of a momentum advance. We'll also be using the Julius Caesar special rule that we've used in the past. And so that means when Caesar is attached to a Roman unit, it gets one additional battle die in close combat. And when attached to a Roman foot unit, that unit can move two hexes and may still battle an enemy unit. So a big advantage for these medium units that are always stuck at moving one hex. We've got the Legio 10 in effect. So the 10th Legion special abilities. And if we remember there, the 10th Legion is a heavy infantry unit. It has, it can do a one hex range attack like all the other Marius medium units. It can move one hex and battle with five dice as normal, or it may move two hexes and not battle. So a little bit more speedier than the standard heavy infantry unit. And then, of course, we are playing at the red block, so that means the Marius Legion special rules in effect, so all those medium troops and Legio 10 are all armed with ranged attacks. So no special scenario rules, just a lot of special block rules we'll have to, to remind ourselves of as tonight's battle gets underway. That's our war council. So I will be taking the Romans in this first pass. Patrick will have the Britons. So he'll get to draw his five command cards first and start us off. All right. I have my five cards. Right. And of course, when you mentioned the unnamed warrior, all I could think of was, Sir, not to be named in this scenario. All right, I have my six cards. Um, so. Okay. Good well, luck. Why, thank you very much, and good luck to you, sir. What to do? I wonder, 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 wonder. Hmm. One leader. That is tough. That is very tough. I, I think that's going to be the, the crux of this, especially with the Romans with three leaders. Mm -hmm. Well, I did see on Commands and Colors that this is a sort of 27 to 73 percent Roman. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can improve some of those odds tonight. So I think we'll do our light troops here. And I can do five. Uh, this, this whole battle is catnip for me playing on the Britain side because it's all chariots and cavalry in the front rank and so you know how I love to charge in with that stuff <laughs> that's right okay we will try this Let's see what what will become of this folly we'll do one, two three one two three Three, and then both of the auxilia will just throw spears. So we'll start with that first. We'll have these auxilia throw at your Legion 10. Here's two dice. And we get uh -oh. a hit. 
But remember, this game is never won with missile fire. Uh, never. <laughs> never. Uh, two dice once Only again. Only by dramatic mounted charges. That's right. Two dice once again. Nothing there. Okay. Well, battle chariots now will attack the flanks here against those light bow. So it's two dice into the water, even though I could do better. Uh, they've got nowhere to run, so two dice, here goes. We get a hit. I'll battle back with a mere capped two dice. And got nothing. Okay. This light chariot, or light cavalry over here will go first. So two dice into those light bow. And no streaks ever on the die roller. And they'll respond in kind. And get nothing for their trouble. And then two dice from the battle chariot. Same target. Nothing. And a response. Ooh. Ooh. So it is a three hex retreat. So back where they came from to start. And then three more. One. Two, three. Okay, then. That is all. Well, that was quite the twist. Hmm. The best way to respond to this is to coordinate my attack. Use three units there. Them out the surf. Just bring the fight straight to E who goes unnamed. So lost, we'll start. lost to the mists of time. So we'll start over here on the left. Our immediate infantry will attack the chariot. Um, can it evade? It's, a barbarian light chariot unit may always, may always evade. evade. So he will indeed evade. Four dice. Now that we're out, so leaders no longer count. Oof. Ooh, but a good hit, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Do see if we can't replicate that over here. Okay, we will also evade that. Not quite. EGO 10. Five dice going into those warriors. Mm. Here we go. Mm, not quite. Three hits. Okay. Did you kill the unnamed leader? Oh. Not quite. Okay, so I will get my four dice back. Looking for a kill here with a leader bonus. Get two. Close. Very close. Not so not quite. Right. Probably sacrifice Legion there, but I kind of figure they're gonna it's gonna be tough for them to survive this fight. It's giving everything I raid in front of them. Let's do a double time. Ooh. That is a great card for this fight. Fortunately. Not quite set up as well as I'd hoped, but uh, we'll do there, there, put them right in the center. Okay. First, we'll start with this against Legio 10. Be three dice with a leader support. Get him. I think we will advance, and then we'll have this one come after Caesar with three dice and leader support. Get one. Let's see if we struck Caesar. We did not. This will be five dice back with the Caesar rule, right? That's right. So that that's an effect for. Counterattacks. Mm -hmm. That is correct. So three hits and a retreat. Uh, well done. Uh, question is now. 
Do you have the first strike card? Hmm. I'm going to presume that you do. So I'm going to. But what, what's the question? If you have the first strike card. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. So uh, we will. Uh, Quite right. Right. Uh, we will. We will attempt Caesar. Wait for it. Okay, nothing. Nah, All right, so three dice plus leader. And look at that. Three hits. Ah. I should get my mouth shut. And... <laughs> Maybe I think I did have it. Let's see. Does Caesar fall? Caesar lives. Back into the water, Caesar. All right. Um, so these warriors who are about to die... Let's see if we can't soften this medium here. So three dice, leader bonus. And we get a hit and two retreats. So one hit, retreat, and another hit. Okay. A failed retreat. All right. And that is all. Wow. There are some devastating losses, but uh, that will play right into my hands as I issue a line command. And order everybody. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right, so. That auxilia will attack the warriors of two dice coming out of the surf. Here we go. And there we go. Leader support wins the day. And he who goes unnamed lives to fight again. Or dice from that medium. Hmm. Medium cavalry. You'll get to. Yeah, you'll just evade anyway, so they will not advance. But these will throw a short spear at your cavalry. Light bow. A range of three. Take one pot shot of the light cavalry that harassed them in the surf. Boo! <laughs> you bastard! One, two, three, one, two, three, four. All right. Here comes a succession of spears. Nothing. Nothing. Dang. Yeah. Damn horses. Finally, one errant bow shot at the chariot. Nothing. All right. Mm. The wall of Romans is out of the surf for the most part. Do four in the center. Those four. There. Okay. That works. Back to you. Use that to order. One unit, that unit being Caesar, 
he'll attach himself to that medium infantry. Two on the right. Those two, I believe. Two. Three on the left. Those three. They'll stay. They'll attempt two shots against the chariot. Boo! Four attempts on the light cavalry. They will evade. Good evade. And attacking that we get cavalry with four dice. We'll also evade. Okay. Hmm. Alrighty then. A counterattack. I like that card. Mm -hmm. To those. To there. And you'll go to there. And the auxilia from the hill will just throw. So they'll throw two spears to there. Get nothing. And then the auxilia, I mean the uh, the warriors here. They will attack in kind with four dice. Get uh, one hit, one retreat. And wish to give in to their bloodlust and follow up and battle again. No, these Britons are made of very. Stiff up a lips, and I think they'll just stay right there. Quite. Quite. With you like the first one, you'll love the sequel. It's just going to be three. So we'll go in with four dice with leader support against the warriors. Okay. Two. Two hits, and we will give back four, because we're going to stand. You can ignore that retreat we this first round. Shall. So here's four dice back. Uh, a hit, and retreat you can ignore. Yep, I'm supported, so I'll stick it out. I'll lobby some arrows your way. Hmm. Just to add insult to injury. Then... The Centurion and his unit will attempt to finish them off with four dice. Can do so. Spec he will um, go ahead and indulge the leader's prerogative, advance, and battle again. So four dice against the Auxilia with leader support. Three back. Nothing. Do three on the right. Guys will just pelt from above two dice. Nothing. Okay, back to you. Order 
my medium troops into battle. Are those units. Get in there, Caesar. They will take that hill. Move up. If Caesar special rule, they'll move two. They'll move as well. Um, he he can't throw. It's like the auxilia. He can move two, but yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't think he can throw either. Right. Okay. Before all that, over here we'll go hilltop to hilltop, capped at three dice against your auxilia. Okay. Oh. Ouch. Okay. I'll give you three back. Two mm. bits. Here's a leader check. Uh, there are some, some bloody hills. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. Speaking of those bloody hills, uphill of two dice. Mm. Oh, leader support. These Romans, man. Uh, do I want to advance? Yeah, and I'll protect them at least from being swarmed. Good call. Right, quiet. Oh, we, oh no, we're here. Uh, hit sphere. No. And another one. Oh, I say. <laughs> quiet. To our English friends over there, mad love and respect. We mimic because we love. Okay. Well, I seem to be in what is known as a Roman pickle. So, Indeed. I do need to do something quite about this. Let's do three units in the center. Let's do those three. Okay. Oh, my hills! <laughs> All right. Let's do two up the hill here. With your mediums with leader support. Get a hit and eliminate them from a retreat. That's a bummer. Oh, well. Uh, they will... Take that hill and battle again. Right, but they still only get two dice for hill to hill. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're they're capped at two going hill to hill because right. they're mounted. You're right. But that's okay. Um, we will still take the opportunity to soften that leader. So target him with two dice and leader support. Getting a hit. And here is... Leader check. Nothing. Hmm. Hit. And one, two, three. We don't have to. Oh, I'm supported. That's right. Um, no, I'll get him out of there. That's that's prudent. All right, and then finally, the warriors, chucking javelins up the hill, two dice. Getting nothing for the trouble. I'll stand so I can retaliate coming back down the hill. All right, we'll cap me. Three dice? And three dice. With leader support. Okay. All right. If that is all. Mm -hmm. Are some medium troops again. Those units. Over here. Centurion will direct his legionnaires to foolishly battle downhill against the numerically superior warriors. We have three dice. 
Yeah, there's the oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that retreat will do it. All right. Good catch. Uh, you may also use your leader's no. prerogative. Come down off the hill if you wish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't let me honey pot ya. Nah. We're gonna go for it here. I'll probably all blow up in my face. So we go four dice against the auxilia to finish them off. Now over here. Spear. Your medium cavalry. Nothing. All right. Gets your auxilia on the planes. Four dice with leader support. There you go. Wow. Didn't even get didn't even get my foothold. I was I, I had plans. I had plans for just the next turn. Oh well. That was that was really good. Uh I can see now why the statistics are as they are because the Britons really have to coalesce and consolidate um, because trying that, that slap and tickle fight there on the wings early on that would have been great if it had done anything of any substance but it wasn't going to and as soon as you get that mass of mediums f marching up the center that's uh that's why I wanted to get onto those hills and just kind of hole up as much as I could. But and, and I started the game with both of those medium cards, so I felt pretty confident, and then soon drew that that line command. Well, I started so. the car the hand with two double times, so Oof. yeah, uh, it was just a matter of the problem is all the good stuff is scattered. So if if I bring them together, then you immediately see, oh, he's got four units together. That must be. A precursor. I'm telegraphing, but ah, uh, well. Uh, no, it was really good. Good job. Um, the Romans are very stout, uh, even even starting in the water, <laughs> you know. So I think the I think the secret for this one, and I don't know if you're going to try it or not, but it does seem like the Britons just need to fall back a little bit, get a good stout battle line, bring everything together, and. Pick your battles, as we've seen time and time again. I don't know, but I'm sure you will you will do better than I on that side. But we'll take five minutes and reset for round number two. See you then. I am ready for round two. Let's see if I can do better this time. Give you a challenge tonight. So I will let you draw your cards first. Okay. That good, uh, huh? <laughs> the, game, the, the game knows me so well. <laughs> Mounted cards, eh? <laughs> no, no. No. What, what do you... That's crazy talk. All right. Lead us off. All right. Uh, you're nothing if not predictable, sir. Hey. The game wants me to do this. Of course it does. And the damn thing about it is, it's probably going to work, too. Okay. We'll start here with the light cav. They would normally have two dice, three dice with the charge card against those bowmen in the surf. That's what we wanted. Dang. All right, so one hit and uh, two retreats they cannot take. Hit, hit. And we will battle back for our very lives with two dice. Since you are, since you are now, cornered. Yes. So I am cornered. Two dice coming at you. Nothing. We'll go with the medium cavalry against the centurion and his forces. So again, this is four dice with the charge. Hmm. Rats. Okay. Did 
you hit the unnamed centurion? Oh, yes. Do I? Do nope. No salvaging that. Okay. So we will return four dice plus leader. Get two hits. Mm. Mm. So. Oh, this. who is the more foolish, the fool or the fool who follows him? Yeah, but, well, it, it's the, here's the thing. It's Here's the call. You know, I, I'd hope the medias would have done better to make this a bit easier. Who that chariot's going to try and wipe out, but... Uh, three dice. Against mm. them? Or, okay. Yeah. If it's me, I'm going after the light bow, but you do you. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know me. I, I'm trying to go after the higher bio target, so I think, and you know, feel free to mock me in the comments after the fact, kids. <laughs> and we do uh, appreciate it. The, the, the centurion and his mediums. All right. Here we go. You better kill me. No. No swords, right? No swords work on barbarian swords. chariots. Okay, good. All right, so we take a hit. So that, that was my, that was my, I was I was balancing that. It's like all right, I'm gonna get two symbols on the dice, but maybe I'll get lucky. Oh wait, no, I get to roll an extra dice because of the of the charge card. Oh, it's three normally, right? So you get one more. Yeah, yep. I was four dice. So here we go, dice number four. Okay. Ugh. Check the leader since you did hit. I did hit. Okay, so we're fine. So four back with leader, and just a hit. Actually, I think I ignore the first sword hit. Treats Barbarian light chariot. Ignore one, one sword, sword hit, hit rolled against it. Well, shucks. Now, not the spectacular attack I was hoping for, but I will take it nonetheless. Successful charge in my book. Mm -hmm. See if the Romans can respond. Let's do inspired left leadership. That's a good response. It is a good response. Uh, they will do one, two, three, four, five. So all of those. And these guys will move out. They will move there. They will move there. Um, <laughs> move there. Okay. Okay. So we got a few attacks. Um, Light bow against your light cavalry. Be two dice. What would you like I'll to stick, do? I'll stick that one out. Okay, so here's two dice. Get two ah. hits. But it may be in vain. Two dice back. It is in vain. So we, with their dying breath. Okay. Back into the surf. Yes. All right. Um... So we got four dice. We're looking for triangles only. One triangle. Come on. We get one triangle. He will advance. Oh, you evaded, so I cannot advance. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, so this one will go then after your battle chariot. Also evading. So another four dice. Looking for green circles only. Very nice. Wipe him out. Goodness. Okay, and that is all. Is it? It is. Uh, Auxilia is done. Oh, yes. The mediums can throw one die at your light cavalry. See, I'm so unused to the Marian rule. Here's one die. And we get oh, a tweet. Unfortunate. That is now all. Mm. Unfortunate. That was a good card, though.
I like that card. I'm going to play that one. That does seem appropriate, yes. All right. How am I going to do? It's like honey this? bunches of warriors over there, man. Yes. Okay. You wish to drive us into the sea. Yes. So unsupported or not unsupported, but leaderless cavalry against centurions mediums with three dice. Ah, one hit. Yes. You should have killed us. Let's see. And two dice. Later. The leader. He's fine. All right. We'll give you four back. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Barbarian Chariot with leader support. Uh, do, 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 do nothing saying it can't have leader support. So three dice against the same unit. There we go. Right. And Centurion lives. So a Barbarian Chariot may momentum advance and make another attack after a successful combat. We'll go after the Auxilia now. Three dice. Leader support. Hmm. That hurt. Two hits. Okay. And under retreat that you could ignore. We will ignore and give three back with leader. Send him packing. Hmm. So I could ignore one of them. Gotta take one. We'll go back up to the hill. Mm. So, 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 so. Here is the question. I gambled in my last combat, came up short. Am I gonna do it again? I think I will. Going after Legio 10 with that auxilia. Three dice with leader support. So, uh, see if we can't whittle them down a bit. Ooh, wow. Indeed. Okay. Let's look up Legio 10. Well, they have no stalwartness, so they're only supported. So they can ignore one of the flags, but they must take the other two. So it will be two hits. Yeah, well, that. Can't, can't argue with that. Right. Um, so they can desperation bat fight back with five dice plus Caesar looking on. And Ooh. make them pay. All right. He who goes unnamed shall try and finish them off with four dice and leader support. Here we go. <laughs> Okay. Spritons are scary. Mm. All right, so the leader ability allows me to just... Oh, where are their warriors? Man, he's going to be throwing five dice. I want you to go for it. But I'm not going to attack Caesar. Are you prepared to pay handsomely for it? Hmm. I think I'm going to go after those mediums. Four okay. dice. All right. There we go. <sighs> mm. Mm. So a hit and two retreats. So we take One of what you can ignore. The hit. The one sends you into the surf. All right. Cold All right. Draw. Oops. That was uh, tough. We'll do four in the center. Ooh. Yeah. So ends the great campaign of He Who Went on Name. There's a reason why no one named him. He did nothing. <laughs> Sees it gets behind. Uh... 
put him there. All right. So start here with four dice. Uh, not a sausage. Bugger roll. Four dice back. Do this with four dice and leader support. Five dice. Five dice because of Caesar, right? Five dice. You get two hits, and you can ignore both retreats. Right. Oh, and here's a leader check. Leader check. See if I can ignore both retreats. Yes, you can. I can. Four dice back. Hmm. Hit, hit, hit. So now let's see if you can ignore said retreat. You can. Okay. And now, if you wish. I shall. Now the auxilia attempt to finish with three dice and leader. And they do. Okay, here's one leader check. Now, where shall he evade? Uh, so I have to evade through, right? Correct. So I'll evade through the auxilia. Yes. So three dice, trying to get a leader symbol. He escapes. That they will advance. And that is all. Let the cavalcade of spears begin. One spear from that auxilia. So you can ignore that. One spear from this auxilia. These are just hurt by that. One spear from this auxilia. Hmm. Two dice here against the mediums and Caesar. Ah! Damn it. <sighs> against the auxilia and Caesar with three dice with leader support. Ooh. A retreat that you can take should you wish. Mm, no, we're gonna give it back. Three dice, right. leader support. Four dice. Oh, four dice because of Caesar, right? <laughs> One hit. But you get to make that leader check. There's uh, two two dice for the leader check. He's okay. It's a tough one. Guess we will do a line command. Do that. That's fair. <laughs> All right. So them first. Four dice. Looking at green circles. Two. is everything. I play it safe. Okay. 
There does seem to be... Hmm. Not as safe as I thought. Never mind. Auxilia on Auxilia. Three dice with leader support. Just one. Caesar is fine. Here's four dice back with Caesar. Two hits and a retreat. And the chariot, three dice of leader support. Cuts down the last of the auxilia. And Caesar. That's fine. Mm. Yeah, I'm not going to get chewed up by going after them. Two, three in the center. Caesar will take them two hexes. They will each arrive one to throw. So throwing light spears, one die. Same target, nothing. And Caesar attacks the battle chariot with four dice. They will evade, so green circles only. Get one. Here's the leader check. Nope, he is fine. And that is all. Going for the kill. Yeah. Yeah. See about that. Three dice of leader support against the mediums. From which unit? Oh. Sorry. Two. Two. Nope. Oh, two hits. Oh, I thought I. Okay, leader check. It's fine. So four dice back with leader. Gets him. All right. Three dice against the mediums with the chariot. Hmm, can ignore both of those. Yeah, taking one hit. Leader check. Uh, for, for now, you can ignore both of those. Right. And you can ignore both of those. Okay, so here's four back with leader. Damn. Did we get your leader? We did not. <sighs> All right, no guts, no glory. Here we go, folks. Two dice for the game. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, it worked for you with this time, Gadget. This time. All right, did you get the leader? You did not. Uh, okay, so no leader did. die in this battle. All right, well, well done, sir. That was a little closer. Gave you a challenge, a stout challenge. What do we think? What, 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 what's the ins and the outs of the Roman invasion of Britain in 55 BC? What do we need to oh. tell folks when they're playing this one? As the Britons, I mean, certainly your strategy about pulling back and making Rome advance is valid. I decided to try and 
chew up a flank and see if I can't couldn't get a big chunk on that left flank. I would um, say it was fairly successful. Fairly. Not as successful as I had hoped, but certainly I was bolstered by the fact that I had started the game with that mounted charge. I also started the game with Clash of Shields, but I never was in a position to really capitalize on it. Too often that is the case, yes. Yeah, and, and I almost played it when it was just going to be the one unit against Caesar and those uh, mediums in the middle. When it was just going to be one-on-one. And I was really hoping to get into a better position to do it, but that's always the trap with that card. So Yes, I concur. You certainly did far better than I with, with the Britons. I think, unfortunately, in both situations... I, playing the Britons, I expected that I was going to take out the Legion 10 first, because that, that is, it's right there. I mean, it's a stout force. So the invitation is to just swarm them with the warriors and, and neutralize that force. And I half expected you to do that. I mean, you did. You you kind of, you just went to a flank. You went down do, into do, that pocket. As an afterthought. I mean, right. I, I really just wanted to focus on the left flank, but your counterattack really kind of decimating you over there. Right. So I didn't have cards where I could get a cluster back in there. So that's when I went down. And at that point, I was like, well, I have to deal with the Legio because I can't have you throwing five dice at me. But here's the thing about the so. Legion 10. You didn't destroy them. You embarrassed them. You threw th- six flags against ah. them. And yeah. they just dissolved away into their fellow compatriot legions. So that was an embarrassment right there. They just wanted to get back on the boats. They said, sorry, Caesar, <laughs> this is not for us today. Uh, and, yeah, uh, it's like that, uh, that game a few weeks ago where it was like, you know, anything but flags, and you rolled like three or four flags. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so I did not get the at all the potential for Legion 10 because I think the one time I used it in a counterattack... The one time I was approaching to use it, you evaded away. So yep. I don't think I even got uh, anything as far as a big unit uh, scoring hit. But uh, this one, I will certainly play it again. I think it is not as nearly imbalanced as... I mean, you showed it. I mean, you won both sides tonight. So clearly, there, it, it's it's not the... It's not the scenario. I'm it's not the player. Skin of my teeth. I mean, true. Uh, true. I didn't have much left in the tank, and that's what I was looking at. That was that was my my call there at the end to, the to go over yeah. the light flank again. Right. I was like, all your units are at full strength, and all my guys are gassed. Yes. I, I've got to kill something. Correct. And you know? it did pay off. I mean, obviously, you look like a military genius because you got the two triangles there at the end, but that could have just as easily whiffed, and then I would have taken that light cavalry because he could not have evaded. So yep. that's how close this one is legitimately, I, I, I think. Uh, but it I, it certainly rewards boldness because you took it, right? Uh, so I think there's something to be said for the, the Britons just meeting them down on the beach. I, I tried, but because they were so scattered and trying to get the warriors into play, which are your most stout tools. Yeah, that really hurt. It was just, you know, like, that eye and those two warriors, it's like, I, I just don't have the right. time. <laughs> to bring and, and that goes to what you were talking about, of kind of falling back. That would give you time to get those warriors into position to really make them effective. So, so that's certainly a way to play this. I'd like to see how that would have played out. Well, in every situation where I could have moved the warriors forward, moving them one step is just not effective. But if if I pull back and wait till you get within two hexes, then I can swarm you with them. But it, it, that just takes way too long. So you, you are seeding ground. You're taking the hills for defensive purposes. That is one way to play this. Uh, but uh, yeah, just having those those that two sets of units there on the Britain right, with uh, the warriors and the auxilia just kind of sitting there, you know, playing, you know, whatever they're doing up there, holding hands and just not not approaching. It's it's hard to get them down there in an effective force without either telegraphing that oh I'm trying to cluster them together so I'm using a double time, or with no leadership up there that's it's also just a pain. 
Uh, so that's that's the challenge for the Britain player. Uh, I think the Romans they they've got everything they need. It's just a it's a matter of holding ground and fighting off the attacks as they come. Yeah, their their one weakness is you start pretty much at the board edge. Right, so right, you've got a ways to go, but. Caesar and the Legio make up for that, for being able to move too, but without any Roman cavalry, that that's it. I would like to try this again, where I get Caesar on Legion 10, and see what he can do with six dice and moving two, two hexes and yeah. attacking. Uh, that's I think that's like a warm knife <laughs> through butter. Well, next week is uh, going to be right up my alley as we move on to the second invasion of Britain. This time, the Britain side will all be chariots and cavalry. So, well, Nay, sir. Nay. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm here all week, folks. By the way, I just want to say just a shout out to all of you who have been watching these thus far and supporting us with all of your kind words in the comment section. But more often than not, we're, we're still getting those little tidbits here and there that when somebody says, hey, you did that, you're not supposed to do that. That's invaluable to us because although there is a little bit of time between when we get those comments on the, the published video and when we're recording, there's about two or three episodes, we are still making those notes mentally. So we're, we're picking up all the little corrections and we really appreciate all of that feedback. And, uh, I've just, been very good. You have been you know, about not following up when you when you evade. That's right. That's right. So we are uh, we are learning. Uh, we are evolving. We're adapting, and we really appreciate the support and uh, both feedback and subscribing and and now you have the opportunity monetarily if you want to support us. That's that's always appreciated too. But uh, more than anything, we're just glad you're enjoying these. And uh, if you can give us a thumbs up, that lets us know that the uh, the episode is to your liking. Uh, I, I look forward to the second invasion of Britain next week and, uh, and your story. So with that, I bid you adieu this evening and look forward to next week. All right. Have a good night. All right. You too. Take care.